In this coding exercise, we are going to cover one of the most popular coding interview questions for Ruby developers, and that is how you can build a ATM method that dispenses the correct denominations to users. So coming back down to our example right here, we're going to build an ATM method. Now, there are going to be a few arguments that can be passed to the ATM. The first is the amount requested. So imagine that you go to an ATM and you say that you want $110. Then the second argument is an array that covers all of the denominations that you want to be sent and what you want back from the machine. So if you ask for $110, and you say that I will take $100 bills, $20 bills, $10 bills, or $5 bills, what the system has to do is return a hash that has the denomination as the key and then as the value, whatever the number of that denomination that is required in order to dispense the cash. So in other words, with $110, we're gonna give the user a $100 bill and then one $10 bill, which will add up to be $110. Now, if you come down to the next line, you can see that we have $245, and we only want to accept $20 bills, $10 bills, and then $5 bills. So the hash here is going to return 12 $20 bills, no $10 bills, and then one $5 bills, which will give us exactly what we're looking for. So this is going to be a fun one. It's going to be a little bit longer in regards to the code that we write than normal, but I think this will be a good exercise. And if you're looking to learn some very helpful skills and processes for Ruby coding interviews, this is definitely a good one to learn. So I'm going to create our method called ATM, and this is going to take a total and then denominations. Now a very helpful thing whenever you're building Ruby methods or classes is to be very explicit about your argument types and your method types. I think our method of ATM is pretty explicit and then total tells me that we're going to be expecting a value and it should be singular, but denominations, because I made it plural, what this tells me if I were to read the documentation, I would realize that this is expecting multiple denominations, which also tells me that this is most likely going to be an array or some type of collection, which if you come down to our expectation, that's exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for the total to be some integer and then the denominations to be an array of integers. So now with this in place, let's create a variable and we're going to store a hash in it. So I want to create a variable called raw data and I'm going to loop through the denominations. But instead of just doing an each loop or something like that, I'm going to leverage the inject method and we're going to build a hash out of it. Remember that one of the most important things in this ATM method is that it can return a hash of key value pairs that contains the denomination followed by the number of items from that denomination. So inject is a great way to build hashes. So I'm going to pass in an empty hash as the default value. And whenever we pass in a value as a default value in the inject, or I should say when we pass an argument in, this is going to be the incrementer value. So in this case, it's going to be an empty hash, and we have access to work with this hash with the first argument in the block variable. So I'm just going to call it hash. I could call it anything. I could call it ASDF if I wanted, but I wouldn't recommend that because this is going to make it much more clear on which value we're dealing with. The next thing I'm going to work with is the denomination. And I'm going to make it singular because with the way inject works, this is going to be accessing each one of the denominations. So each time it loops through the collection, the first time denomination is going to equal 100, then it's going to equal 20, then 10, and then 5 for this line right here. So with that in mind, inside of our denominations inject method, now I'm going to 
access an add to the hash. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is set up a key for the denomination and we can access this by saying hash and then brackets denomination. And if you are unfamiliar, you don't haven't really worked with hashes a ton, then we can kind of take a base case example right here. So here if I say hash and just make it an empty hash, if I print out what this value is here, you can see it's going to be just an empty hash. And actually, we need to finish off our method here, or I, I should say I'll comment it out, because the, uh, the system that auto-processes the Ruby code won't work if there's a big syntax error like that. So now you can see this is an empty hash. But now if I pass in some value, like K, hey, and or I should say a key, and pass in one, two, three, what this is gonna do is update the hash, so now it's going to have that value, and now if I print out the entire hash, it's going to have a key value pair of hey with the value of one, two, three. So that's uh, that just a very quick review on how to add values and keys to a hash. So that's essentially all we're doing here is we have a hash, we're passing in the denomination. So if you come down to the bottom, the first time this processes, you're gonna have a hundred as the key, then 20, then 10, then five, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now that we have the key side, let's take a look at what we wanna put in the value. And this is gonna use a little bit of a, a unique method. You won't see this method a ton, but it is perfect for what we're looking to do here. And that is called the div mod method. We're gonna take a quick look at what this does in a real life scenario. So the div mod divides and then gives the remainder. So if I were to say 10 dot div mod and say three, we can run this code and you'll see that what div mod returns is an array. And this is pretty cool because div mod returns as a first element of the array, how many times the element can go inside. So the total number of times that the second argument it can go into the first argument here. Then the other thing it returns as the second element is what the remainder is. Now it's interesting because this is a very helpful method when it comes to working with mathematical equations in Ruby, but it's simultaneously one you don't really see a ton, but we're definitely gonna use it here because this is gonna give us a very critical component that we're gonna need in order to build out our algorithm. So right here, let's kind of walk through what we've done. We've created a raw data variable. From here, we're building a hash where we loop over every item, each one of the denominations. Inside of that, we pass in a key of the denomination to the hash and a value of whatever the total dot the div mod with the denomination is. Now by itself, this isn't gonna be everything we need. The other thing we have to do is we have to update the total. So I'm going to say total minus equals, which is just going to decrement the value, total dot div mod denomination dot first, and this is very important, and we can walk through exactly why it's important in a second. So what exactly is this doing? Well, if I run the code again, just so you can see exactly what div mod does, remember, it returns the number of times that this argument can go into a value. So in this case, how many, three, how many times three can go into 10? And then it returns the remainder. So what are we doing on line six? Well, we're decrementing the total and we're decrementing it by the total dot div mod with the denomination passed in as the argument dot first. So in the case down here on line 17, this would be the total minus three times whatever the denomination is. So what I'm wanting to do here essentially is let's say that we have the total 
of 110 right here. The first time that this process is through, we're going to add this hash of 100 with one count. So the key being 100 and the value being one. We're gonna pass that in one time. And then on line six, what we're going to do is we're gonna grab that value and then we're going to subtract it from the total because we need to know how much money is left and that's what we can do right there and what that's going to allow us to do is now that we have that we know that a hundred is going to be subtracted from 110 and then when we come to 20 we know that 20 can't go into that so the the count here is going to be zero but then when we get to the next one we know that we're dividing uh, there's only 10 left, so it's going to be 10 divided by 10, which is 1, and then when we get to 5, it's going to be 0. So that is a pretty handy little process. The last thing that we have to do for this part of the method is we have to return the hash. Now, if we come down, this is still not totally done. Let me copy this and show you why. So if I come down and let's run this code just to kind of see how it works, you can see that this almost works. See how that we have this ATM method and we can see that this returns an array or a hash and each element, each key has an array inside of it. So it has one and 10, it has zero and 10, it has one and zero. And the reason because, uh, the reason why it's doing this is because the div mod method, if you remember, returns two elements, it returns an array. So we still have a little bit more work to do. And that work can be just kind of a little cleanup method. So I'm gonna say raw data dot map, do and then pass in the key and the value for the hash and then I'm just going to update each one of these items. So I'm going to update the key and set it equal to the value which in this case is the block variable v dot first. So all that's happening here is remember how when I just ran that a second ago it had the key and then it had an array for each one of the values. Well now what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing the first element in the array because that's the only one that we really need in order to pass this test. So now if I run this code now we should have what we need and we almost do. I just forgot one little thing I have to update the I have to pass in what we actually want returned. So now if I run this, there we go. We have a hash and this is working perfectly. As you can see, we have $110. It knows that we need $100 bill, no 20s, 110, and zero fives. Now if I copy this and pass in some other number, let's say that we want to pass in 325, and we'll keep all of these same values here. If I run this, you can see that for $325, we need a $300 bills, 120, zero tens, and one five. This is working very nicely. And I've gone over a lot of the implementations for the ATM method coding interview question. And honestly, I wasn't very happy with a lot of them that I found. I didn't really find a lot that I found very elegant. And surprisingly, as much as the div mod method here helped us, I didn't find a single one that had that. That doesn't mean that there weren't any, it just weren't any when I was researching it. But I really think that this method comes in very handy when building out this algorithm. So hopefully this is one that you can, if you're doing some coding interviews, you can impress your interviewer with. So I'm going to save this and let's run it and verify that our tests are all passing. So this is gonna be March 1st. Now if I run this, one example, zero failure. So this is working very nicely. I definitely recommend for you to go over this a few times. I spent way more time on this than our normal daily exercises, but I think that it's helpful because this is a little bit more on the non-trivial side and it really helps you think about how to work through algorithm development in Ruby.